Nyamia, Valley of the Horses. This video is going to be a little bit different for a simple reason. I dropped the hard drive just before I was going to post it, and I have not been able to retrieve the data off the hard drive. So what you're going to see here is the render cache clip from my editing program. But it's just such an interesting area and some great footage, and I really wanted to share it. So uh, I hope you like it. It's a bit unusual, but uh, it should be interesting. This was my campsite for the night, just off of Highway 20. And it was brilliant. There was birds all over the place, including loons, which I love. And it was, the only problem was it was a little cold. It was frozen water on the bench in the morning. And uh, that's challenging because I only have a heating bag that's good down to five degrees. So other than that, a beautiful spot. on Highway 20, and again, lots of burn. Uh, that's what you see everywhere you go now, miles and miles of burn. This is uh, an outlook just overlooking uh, the valley that I'm about to cross into. This is looking south um, across the, I believe it's the Chilcotin River. down to Lee's Corner in Hacerville, I was expecting a gas station. And I later found out from a local that it had been burned out in 2017 and they had simply packed up and left. So it was off to a station a little farther down the way where I hoped that there would still be gas. There is the First Nations gas station, and then there's this little uh, general store at Alexis Creek. And it has a fair amount of stuff there, although a little tough to get anything fresh or produce of any sort. But you can definitely get a couple of dinners out of it. I had to go back to the First Nations gas station and got fueled up and headed back to Lee's Corner. This is the bridge crossing the Chilcotin River. After the bridge you do some switchbacks which take you up the hill and into the Unisitan Reserve. After that, it is a lot of fairly flat, uh, easy road, and a lot of fire burn. Probably 60 miles of it. Yeah, this is the end of another road that comes down from Highway 20, but I don't know how passable it would be. I pulled over to the side of the road and had a little bit of lunch here, maybe halfway along the road to Niamea Valley. There was maybe one car per half hour, and all of them checking in to make sure you're okay. But as you can see, it's a pretty wide 
gravel highway. Um, not challenging. I mean, there was a few switchbacks when you're crossing over river valleys. Uh, this one is the Taseco River. But pretty easy riding. This is the first sight of the Niamia Valley, and you start to wind down into the floor of the valley where you have Connie Lake. This is pretty stunning country in here. My first horses, and then this guy bolted across the front. Scared the crap out of me. But it's a great shot. This is the gas bar in general store at Henny. Now heading out well past the village. I was kind of surprised. I thought uh, the village was close to Chilco Lake, but it's actually quite a few kilometers. And again, the road is very good. It's a gravel highway. And then it starts to narrow down. And it keeps on narrowing down into kind of a pretty rough, muddy, rutted little trail, which is kind of odd leading towards a provincial park. recommend this road if it has been raining for a few days because as you can see from all the dried ruts it turns into a sloppy mess. After a fairly steep descent you finally uh, start to run into the provincial campsite. Which is right beside Chilco Lake. Uh, when I was there, there was no one else. So I poked around for a little bit, and it is a pretty beautiful place. I decided not to stay because it was only 1.30 in the afternoon. There was nobody else there and it was quite windy and I expected it to be cold at night. So I headed back up the road uh, past the gas bar and a bunch more horses. I turned up the Vedan Elk Lake FSR, which had some really stunning views. I checked out the Vedan Lake North Rec site, but decided to keep on going.
there was a fairly steep, long pull up onto another plateau. called Shonagan Lake wreck site, which was pretty amazing. Again, there was nobody here, but I loved the feel of this place. So remote, so quiet. I had some beautiful drone footage of it, but that got lost. But you get a sense of the place. I got my campsite all set up and collected a bunch of firewood and settled in for the evening. The only challenge was all I could find for food in those stores up on Highway 20 was some crap dinner and a can of salmon that I brought. But still, a beautiful place to spend the night. next morning I got all packed up and headed back down the same FSR out to the Niamea main road. If I'd had a companion with me I would have explored some of the rough FSRs that continue on up to the north but I just didn't feel comfortable doing that uh, all by myself uh, this far out from any other support. This is coming back down the valley into Bedden Lake. And it's a lot prettier country than all the way out from Highway 20. Uh, because this is close to the coastal mountain range and you start to get into some pretty interesting stuff here. I also caught a black bear grazing on some berries just off the side of the road here. I saw a lot of black bears up in this area. Here's the main Niamea Valley Road again. This is the Chilcotin River again. back up to Highway 20 and headed for Williams Lake. In Williams Lake I found the Lakeside Motel, which in spite of a rather rude receptionist turned out to be quite a win. It had a very cute room and a nice little view over the lake and was an enjoyable end to my odyssey out to the Niamea Valley of the Horses.